Hello and welcome to the channel. In the previous video, we've seen how to get data from a restricted Google spreadsheet using our own API, our own Google script API deployed as a web app. So as an example, we had here a small table with data, which is restricted, as you can see here. And then we've created going to extensions, apps, script, a very simple script that we have deployed as a web app and used to send a HTTP request. And this is the response. To make it simple, we've converted the range in Google Sheets into a JSON string. Remember, we've used this line here to convert the data into a JSON string or JSON format. Now, this is actually quite a simple JSON file. We only have rows and columns. So we can easily extract the data and put it in a, in a range in the worksheet. And I'm gonna show you how to do it in this video. So let's add a new module and create a macro write data to range or something like this. And we're gonna get the data as, as input. So again, there are different ways to do it and it depends on how the JSON looks like. In this case, it's quite simple. I'm just gonna use the split function. But if you want to see some other way to do it, I'm gonna leave you the link up here where I'm using different functions, the find method and the meet VBA function to loop through the JSON and get the data. But here we're just gonna say data is split and we're gonna split our data based on the opening square bracket because as you see here we actually don't need the first and last brackets but then after each bracket we have a row of data so that's one that's another and so on so that's what we're gonna do here and data split could be declared as a variant now for each and we can call it data row in data split if data row is not empty and this will only happen actually because of the first square bracket. If we would remove that, we wouldn't need this condition. But anyway, we're gonna have that. Then we're gonna increase a row counter by one. And now we're gonna split again by column. So let's call it data calls, a split our data row by the comma because the comma is actually separating each value uh, for a column and this would work if we don't have any commas uh, in the values and of course if we don't have any square brackets in the values so otherwise we will have to find some other way to do it or you could use the json to vba converter available on github i have mentioned that several times you can find a lot of information on the web on youtube but i personally think it's easier to just create your own macro so now for each cell value in data calls, if the cell value is not empty, then we can increment the column by one. And by the way, we need to set column to zero before each loop. And now we just need to get rid of the double quotes. So we do that with cell value, replace in cell value, we're gonna replace the double quotes, which is CHR34, by an empty string. And we are also gonna get rid of the closing square brackets. So that would be, again, cell value equals replace. In cell value, we're gonna replace now the closing um, square bracket with an empty string. And now, finally, we can in cells r comma c dot value we can add our cell value. We end the if statement here, and then we move to the next cell value. And here we can end the other if statement. This one up here, and move to the next data row. And that's it. That should actually convert this into a range with data. But we're gonna run it from the beginning. So I'm going back to the previous macro. And remember, we covered that in the previous video. And here, I'm gonna call, and let me copy this. Here, we're gonna call that 
other macro, but not with data. Here is with response. It doesn't really matter. We, we just gave th that name here, and we gave the other name in the other macro. So it doesn't really matter. Now, let me remove this, because we're going to run it from the beginning. And it's going to pull the data. And I see there is some mistake here. Yes. It's not char. It's char. Hopefully, there are no other mistakes. Let me just go back here. Let's run it. It's going to pull the data, and it's going to debug print the data here. But it's going to call this other macro, which has converted that into a normal range. So it has put the data just as we had it in our original uh, Google spreadsheet. So if this looks a bit complicated for you, please check the other video. I'm using the find and the meet function. It's probably not much easier than this one if you find this uh, difficult. Now, the other option, or some of the other options, is, of course, to return the response in other format. So this is your own API. You can actually do whatever you want here. So instead of converting the data to JSON, we could do something else. We could actually create an HTML table. So that's another option. And I can just copy that here for you. So that looks like this. Then we wouldn't need this one. I'm just going to comment it. Then we would loop through the data. So we need to have two loops, one loop through rows and another through columns. And we need to add everything to an HTML table uh, string variable. And by the way, this is very similar to what I've done in another video in Excel to convert a range into a table. I'm leaving the link up here, so you can have a look there. And what you see here on the screen is the same code, but in Google Apps Script. Once we have this HTML table, we can actually uh, send that instead of the JSON. So let me just comment this for a moment and run it to show you how that looks like. So if I run that now the macro, you see we've got our data in an HTML table. So this might look more complicated here, but then it makes things easier in Excel because we can then read the data as an HTML table using the HTML library. So for that, we would need to add two references, the Microsoft HTML object library, this one here, and then we will have another macro, convert HTML to range, for example. Again, with the data here, we're going to call it. And then we will declare HTML as an object. And I'm going to copy paste the code here. So this is the code to convert the HTML data into a range. So as you see, we are creating a HTML object. And then we are assigning the data or the response to the inner HTML of the body, then, then we can use the HTML elements to get the data. So first we loop through rows. TR is the HTML element for table row. Then we loop through columns, or TD, table cell. And then we add this, or the inner text of that. And then we don't need to worry about removing the double quotes, the opening or closing brackets, and so on. So. Now, to show you this, I have to redeploy. But before that, let me just uncomment here. And we are going to return now the HTML table. And we need to redeploy this. So I'm coming here and editing the deployment. We're going to have a new version of our Sheets API. And we're going to deploy it. The link is the same because we just edited that deployment. And now we can come back here. And instead of calling the other macro, we're going to be calling this one. So let me come back here and say call now, convert HTML to a range. And this is the response. Now, if we run it, we're going to get now the response as an HTML table, as you see here. Table, table row, table cell, and so on. And then we get 
the data in our worksheet. So that's how we get data from a restricted Google spreadsheet with our own custom Google script API that can return the data in the format we want. And then we can easily convert or transform that data again into a range format in Excel. I hope this was useful and thanks for watching.